So I'm just here to do a manual test of the system at the moment. So the first thing we need to do is um, disable any outputs to stop alarms going off. So I've just finished doing a load of manual fires and uh, I've got a printout here. And uh, what you find normally in the door is that we have a printout of all the devices. Right, I'm now gonna demonstrate how to um, use the self-test devices along with the CLSS app. Um, so first things first, we need to connect the phone to the panel. Um, before doing that, we need to go into service mode and then pick the on and Bluetooth option that will then set all the all the self-test devices of bluetooth um, and you can see that the test light will be flashing to let you know that you've done that um, once that's done we then go to zone we connect the phone up to this to this panel and then we set zone test mode this will then show all the leds on the self-test devices light up lit up blue and the devices that need manually testing will be lit up red. So once we get near to a device, the app will show me what device I'm closest to through the Bluetooth. I can then swipe right to say that I visually inspected it and there's not an issue. We're just basically gonna start doing initial, initiating the self-test mode. So I'm just going onto my phone, we've already set up the panel. Initiate self-test. And then we'll pick all the zones. The good thing about the self-test as well is it can do multiple panels and it does all the loops at the same time. So what you get is six devices per loop at the same time. So it can do a, a whole network of panels within about 30 minutes. Right, so it's now initiated all the zones for the self-test. I'm then gonna also put on the Bluetooth so we can then start a visual inspection of devices. My experience with the self-test process has been really positive. Um, as a commissioning engineer, it's gonna really make my life easier. You've not gotta worry about getting keys to get into certain rooms. The amount of times I've been to jobs and you, you know, you're trying to get a key to get into a room and that person's not in that day, so you've gotta rearrange to come back or you, know, you need to get into somewhere and it's a certain engineer needs to let you in there or a lift engineer needs to turn up to be able to get you into the lift shaft. With the self-test, I think the safety's massively improved. Basically, you don't need to get to a device yourself to test it. So if it's high level or in a lift shaft, you don't have to physically get to them devices because they'll test themselves and they'll tell you if there's a problem. If you've got people that are working in certain areas and they don't want you coming in and disturbing them. Excuse me, sorry, am I right to just test the detector again? With the self-test, it does it for you, so you don't need to get into that area and you can be certain that it's worked and that it's gonna carry on working afterwards. Right, yeah, that's all the devices um, inspected, and that's uh, me all done. Right, so we've just completed a self-test of the building, and uh, one of the devices has come up that has failed, um, and it's showing that it believes it's covered. Um, we've, we've gone down to it's in this cleaner's cupboard, so we're going to have a little look and uh, try to work out what's wrong with the device. Uh, as you can see, the device has been covered. Right, so although um, this will show what I've tested, unfortunately the biggest problem we have is that if you haven't managed to get to all the devices, it's already the end of the visit. So it's not until someone goes through the list at possibly the last visit and then they have to work out what devices haven't been tested and how to get to them devices because they're obviously there's a reason why they weren't tested the first time. Um, so you do find that in some situations devices get missed 